kind of like putting everything to the side. I talked to this guy today in Temecula, and I felt bad. Hope he watches later. Hope you watch, man of God. But he kept saying, it's so hard. It's so hard. It's so hard to live for God like this, like 24-7. And I told him, yes, the Bible says this grace is sufficient, meaning it's possible, right? But he demands a response from us. He doesn't want to just look at this situation. He, you know, he kept making excuses one after the other. He kept saying, well, I can't come on Sundays. And I was just telling him, like, bro, like, if you're on the go, like, we, I told him this ministry is really about 24-7 walking with Christ. Like, we're trying to help everybody to grow in their walk. Like, we don't want just to get in our brain Sunday Christian. Sunday Christian, that's what we are. You know what I mean? Thursday Christian. I'm this, this Christian. Or I'm only online. You know, it's like, no, yeah. we want the collective balance of everything. We want things to be holistic. Amen? Mm -hmm. And so when I explained that to him, you know, he kept saying stuff. And I said, you know what? I said, you just got to. I just told him straight up. I said, I'm going to tell you what you need to hear. Stop making excuses. <laughs> you have been an excuse generator. And you don't understand, like, God is not, like, God's not going to drag you into this thing. Okay, you have to respond through submission. You have to want it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Right. Like we're going to push our bodies like we're all tired. We had a long day, but we're going to say, OK, I got to feed my spirit, man, because the Bible says that this outward man is perishing, but the inner man is being renewed daily. How? Through this word of God. Amen. We have to pursue this word of God. And so when he's saying Matthew 25, he's saying, you know, don't fall asleep because what happened is they didn't take the extra time to do what they were really supposed to be doing in the kingdom, right? And this is not like future tense. This is talking about like from the kingdom on, right? And so as, as we keep reading here, um, he says, but he called back, believe me, this is 12, 25 and 12, I don't know you. He says, so you too must keep watch for you do not know the day or the hour of my return. All right, now, what do you think the oil is? What do you think the oil represents? It says extra oil, right? Keep that, keep that fire burning. Now, I just talked about this. I'm going to show it to him, too. Give me, a, give me, a, give me a, let my little prop. Let him, let him, yeah, let him just see the whole thing. What do you think this is? It is a fried cable. <laughs> <laughs> fried, dip blade inside. That's my earpiece. Yeah. Okay. How do you think that happened? I mean, you're probably connecting it to a vault that was overpowering with fire the cable. So this is what it is. So how many times do you think I've done that? Obviously, several times. Yeah. That was the last time right there. Yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not, this morning, I had that white cable connected to the ring battery. Mm. The same ring that you were saying wasn't working, you were right. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> so I charged it and then I unplugged it and then I the moment I grabbed that and connected it to that device I heard a voice tell me I didn't think it was the Lord but it said don't connect that I didn't listen of course like I mentioned before we don't always listen when the Lord speaks right but then the second voice as I put it down on a piece of paper and some and some uh receipts I heard the voice say, don't place it there. It's almost like I already knew I was going to be stubborn, right? And just avoid that. And I put it right here. Then I talked to somebody 40 minutes on a, conver on a conversation, setting up my truck, everything, about to leave for Temecula this morning. And I had everything I needed. I didn't need to go back in the house. But some told me, go back in the house. I went back in the house. I smelled plastic burning. Mm -hmm. Then I walked over there and I saw it. I grabbed it, put it to the side. And then I uh, first was like going to dump it in water and everything. And the Lord told me, no, leave it for the rest of the family. In fact, show it to everybody to recognize that this little, that little, little moment can change everything. Right. Just imagine if the second time I didn't listen. Exactly. And now they don't know what's happening. Everybody's sleeping. We're sleeping. Right. So when the Lord started speaking to me, telling me that the enemy wants to shut this down, whatever this is, he doesn't want to happen. In the last 48 hours, people have been getting multiple deliverances, healing, Sam, you guys prayed for her. There was some healing big time. She texted me back later when she got home, like really appreciative of this sisterhood that she does not have. She grew up Jehovah Witness, guys. You understand? So she doesn't know 
You know what I'm saying? Like a whole household that is rigid, legalistic, completely. Against. In fact, I remember even when I was praying in the spirit and even when the, the, the wedding call was going forward, I asked her to renounce that and the thing wouldn't even let her say that. I had to literally push and say, I renounce Jehovah Witness, you know? Something came through that. And so I'm saying that what God has happening here through these house fellowships and everything else, the enemy does not want. But the Lord told me we have to be very, very, very critical to his voice. Know him like that. Try to say, okay, Lord, is he, are you speaking? What's what's happening? You know, I didn't even bother. I just didn't listen. <laughs> you know, but thank, thanks be to God, his grace, just to give me another thing. And I said, okay, I'll put it here. Whatever. Okay, whatever. Because I couldn't tell at the moment if it was my head, just my brain saying something or God was just giving me a little nudge like, hey, like Dodo head, go. No, he said Dodo head. But that's, that's kind of how I felt for a second because I was like, man, I love my family. I love what God is doing in my life. I would hate for something just that quick to change just in a moment, right? So this is about us hearing God's voice and making the most of this opportunity. Hey, man, there's some proof here? Wow. Okay, I forgot. That looks good. And it's all listening to I don't know, Timothy likes fruit. Oh, they like fruit. Anybody like fruit, go for it. I'll get some more. So, <laughs> so the oil is needed in order to what? Burn that lamp. Amen? So I can tell everybody, please here, keep your lamps lit. Amen? Keep them lit. Like the young kids say. Lit, it's lit. No. Seriously. It's we should be making light. this little light. I'm going to let it shine. All right. So, but we got to make sure we have that oil. Amen? Amen. We spend that extra time. Even the moments where we're like, oh, I don't want to do this. I just want to sleep until like a week. Right? <laughs> the whole week. The whole week. No, seriously. There are moments where I do feel like that. Turn into a bear. Yeah, exactly. We want to hibernate. But there are things that are about to start changing that the Lord told me. It's like, it's going to be some sacrifice. It's going to be struggle. As you guys know, I texted him. He's probably off like, what? Fast? What? You fasting and praying? I'm like, hey, you want to jump in? Hey, this is this is the options. There's a whole lot of stuff you can look into. Um, I put a PDF in the email so you can look at options. You pray to God and ask, okay, if you're going to do this, if you want to participate, there are a variety of ways. You can ask as, as Sister Lynn, she, she said the Lord revealed to her uh, years back of uh, specific things. And it really, she saw breakthrough in that. You understand? And it's good to be that way. Like that builds in your relationship with God, period, point blank. You start to communicate. I always tell people, when you go to the Lord, remember, it is two-way, right? It is speak and listen. And I know most of the time it's always speak. I want, I want, I want, I want. Right? Mm -hmm. Timothy, you always want something, huh? Right? Oh, We're going to listen to you eventually. He got something to say. And he just right now, give me, give me, give me. You know? He just has Yes, no. <laughs> right? But this, but this is what our relationship with our Father, our relationship with Christ. We're going to ask, but we have to listen to. Amen? And we have to obey. So they spent time with God, as we can see. We want to make sure that we're not... This is a scary passage. I always look at this. I, every time I've heard preachers try to flip this one way, I've noticed that they always gloss over the part where it says, I don't know you. He responded back. They tried to knock on the door, and he says what? The other five bridesmaids returned. They stood outside calling, Lord, Lord. And they tried to ask, almost like you can gather someone else's oil, so to speak. And they were like, nah, don't be touching my oil. Say, you go get some for yourself. Buy some for yourself. You're going to sacrifice things in your lives. And, and other people may at times expect to get it from you. Like, some people will try to come at me like, well, I want to have a testimony like that. Do you really want a testimony like that? <laughs> do you really want to know? Because the reality is, whatever you are carved to do, God will give you, I call it tailor-made suffering. <laughs> tailor-made situations. No, you guys don't think that's how God works. I'm not going to baby anybody here and not say like, hey, difficulty is real. The narrow path is difficult. And God will shape you for circumstances that he knows can either bring out 
you into a closer relationship with him or you turn out to, you know, show that your faith is somewhere else. Remember, he says, think you're not strange. The fiery trials that come to do what? Test your faith. Amen. Test whether your faith is in him or is it in something else. And this here demonstrates that Christ knows that there's going to be some people that go all out and there's going to be some people that are foolish and don't take advantage of the opportunity at hand. And this is an interesting passage because he says, I don't know you. And when I read, I think it's in Matthew's, is it Matthew 7 when he brings that up again, right? Or earlier when he talks about those that are, he says, they casted out evil spirits in my name. Or is it, is that the one? I'm not sure. Yeah. Maybe it's Mark 7. I think it's Mark 7. But he says, I never knew you. Workers of what? Iniquity. Workers of iniquity. Hidden sins. Had a hidden agenda. Hidden sins. You were breaking God's laws. And I'll show you guys. Did I, did I talk to you guys about that? Breaking God's laws? Mm -hmm. So then 1 John. You guys saw that, right? Because people say, what is breaking God's law? I've had people tell me, oh, that's not preaching the gospel. If you don't preach the gospel, you're breaking God's law. I was just like, mm, I don't know. That doesn't sound right. Then I find out 1 John 3 says that if someone continues to practice sin, it says breaks, breaking God's laws. His moral laws is if you continue a lifestyle of sin, he makes it very clear that this is a person that can fall away. This is a person that you're, you're, you're saying to God, essentially, like Hebrews 6 says, you're throwing, the, you're throwing Jesus Christ back on the cross. <laughs> he said you're throwing him uh, up to the cross afresh, right? That's what the, that's what the, the Hebrew writer says. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that this family, the word of God is here to expose our innermost thoughts and get us on this right path. Matthew 25 is explaining types of bridesmaids, types of servants, right? And we understand that we fall as the bridesmaids and Christ is, is the groom. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, 16, this is a continuation. And the reason why I like to read this particular way and not just get into, you know, topical things, because the word of God was never divided up into chapters and verses like we think, you know? That came over time. But if you see this, it says, Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of what? A man going on a long trip, he called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. It's 25 and 15. It says, He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last. All right? This is when people... Mentioned about the talents, because I know people think, you know, it's like talents, like, hey, I can play the flute or something. It, it's really, he's really actually talking about money. But he is getting into this element of what, what God does give you, he gave you for a reason. Mm -hmm. Amen? That you possess something from him. And it says, dividing the portion to their abilities, he then left on his trip. The servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money and earn five more. He said, the servant with two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Don't hide. Don't hide the master's money. Do you see this, this element of Mark 7 talks about workers of iniquity. They said, I did this in your name. I casted out evil spirits. We healed the sick. We did all this stuff, right? We saw great, prophesied the whole night. He says, I never knew you. That doesn't make any sense to me when I usually look at that passage. Because I'm like, wait a second. How do you not know God, but you're doing these things in the name of God, in the name of Christ? How does that work? Because when God knows his people... When you know God, you're going to live for him all the way, your public life and your private life. This is not going to be something where you stay in this state of compromise. God doesn't want that. He wants us to operate in truth. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the truth is that he's called us to live holy and set apart lives. And 
this person here basically said, hey, one, look at look how God acknowledges this whole situation. Let's look at the results. Let's look at the results just for a second. 19 says, after a long time, their master returned and from his trip called them to give an account of how they used his money. He says, the servant to whom he has, tr who, who he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more and said, master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest and I've earned five more. Okay. Production. Amen. Mm -hmm. It says the master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Right. My good and faithful servant. It says, you have been faithful in handling this small amount. I want everybody to say, I will be, I will be faithful, faithful in whatever amount, in whatever amount God, gives me. God gives me. Okay, I want you to declare that. <laughs> because I don't think anyone here is not giving. Has, there's nothing that God has not given you. Okay? You have to know that. Like, I don't, this is not about pastor so-and-so, deacon so-so, squash all that. In the kingdom, we are being allotted things from the spirit of God. Amen? From inheriting and being a part of this. He says, let's celebrate. He says, uh, so now I will give you mo many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. 22, the servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest, and I have earned two more. The master said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in ha handling this small amount, so now I will give you more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Whatever God entrusts you, I've said it many times, he is watching your availability and your obedience. What he gives to you, it doesn't matter. You may think, and I, this, I, don't, I don't care about how people, other people see it. They can be like, oh, look at that little small ministry. You don't know what they're doing. Oh, that's cute, you know? Whatever. I'm going to the Lord in everything he gives me. I'm giving me, give me a little jelly belly. I'm going to work it out. <laughs> and man, we're going to work this little thing out and maximize it. That's what Christ wants. You have the right to be fruitful. Understand? You have to know that when he says stay in the true vine, he really meant that. He really meant for us to be fruitful, not for us to be lacking in things. Amen? And so this part of it recognizes something. You're given something by God means that it is possible to produce. Okay? You, you want to write that in your mind. Write that in the core of your heart. You are capable of producing whatever God has given you. That is not like... I don't want it to sound like a motivational whatever. I'm trying to talk about in direct correlation to the things of God. I'm not saying like, hey, the man of God said, I should be able to get that promotion I wanted. I didn't say none of that. <laughs> what I'm saying, <laughs> darn, <laughs> shucks. No, he's just like, I'm going to invest. Yeah, I'm going to invest all of this over here. And then boom, goes in the tank. I didn't say that. What I said was there are specific things in the kingdom where when we talked about last week, and uh, just to catch you up a little bit, Brother Ellie, we've been going over a lot of um, gifting and growing in our giftings and finding out we actually even sat the last time. I don't even know if anybody even got that. We didn't have no music. We just had chairs. But <laughs> I was supposed to do musical chairs, but it didn't work out like that. But some of us, we were going over the scriptures where it says some, uh, Christ gave these parts to the church. Some apostles, some prophets, teachers, right? Evangelists, pastors. And so where people felt led in their spirit, like, okay, some of us, the, real, the reality is some of us are a combo of those things. Mm -hmm. I haven't really met someone that's 100% like an evangelist. They may be that in the forefront of the, what they are, like that may, may be the main thing, but you continue to start to grow into other things. You know, I, I, that's, that's the truth. Like even my bishop, he was a preacher, but he was more of a pastor at times. As he grew in his faith, he became even a better teacher. And he was definitely a prophet. He could see a lot of stuff visionary. He would even talk casually with us, and then things would happen. And we'd be like, wow, 
He wasn't even on this, thus saith the Lord, you know, I've seen a moon and whatever. He wasn't like that all the time. But there was times where he would go there with us and we'd be like, okay, I get it, you know. But when it comes to like an apostolic move, right, like kind of operate like that, I've had conversations with him. He'd go, ooh, I don't know if I would be able to do that because I know his heart and his pastoral mindset, he's like, you know, and I kind of have that too. I'm, I'm very protective, but I, I would rather see the growth in people than just worry if they're going to get attacked all, all the time, <laughs> you know, and that's a little different. Pastors are like, I got to maintain, I got to maintain this thing. Can't let nobody go, you know, that's, that, that's the thing. No one has, not everybody has that. And, they, and so God works it out where he gives all of us these giftings so that we can all build each other up. But in this here, whatever he's giving you, as we can see here, you have to maximize it. Mm-hmm. You don't want to be caught slipping. You want to make sure that your, your oil is lit, amen, that you get the extra time with God. That's why we're introducing, at least I believe, that's why God wants to bring out the fasting and praying and knowing that when we fast and pray, we're, I mean, think about Jesus, right? Yeah, and you know, I've, I went over the seven circles with you guys before, and the whole, you've seen the cards, aka very, everybody thinks they're tarot cards every time. I gotta literally say it now as a disclaimer, because if I don't say it, everybody's like, two seconds to walking out of the door. Literally. Even almost Sam thought that. She was like, oh, what? <laughs> Even another, another girl, Molly, she looked and said, are those angel cards? I said, no. She's like, oh, because I was about to leave. Angel cards? What are those? Yeah, there's things called angel cards. Yeah. This is crazy stuff. There was on, on Amazon, you know, that they were trying to sell a, uh, a Ouija board uh, oh, yeah. connected to what? The Holy Ghost? Yeah. Holy Spirit yeah, Ouija Holy board. Ghost board or whatever. Oh. This is crazy. I'm thinking of Simon. Right? Exactly. Simon the Sorcerer. Yep. We're going to get into that in a second. Um, because we start seeing the kingdom of God manifested when we look at the book of Acts and we look all throughout the epistles. And we should see even in our lives. Um, as I, I joked about it last uh, Tuesday or just a few days ago, we were supposed to have Bible study. We flipped it. Or the God flipped it, really. I didn't, he just did a somersault on everybody. And we ended up doing Bible living, amen, <laughs> more than anything that day. Because, you know, people were getting deliverance, they're getting prayed for, healing, it was baptisms, all night. Oh, you know, Tuesday. that happened this Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, that was everything that happened. You know, when you guys came, somebody came to the door. Amen. We got you this time. He was just like, hell no. Yeah, it was- I got some oil. Don't worry. <laughs> We're like, no, we don't know you. No. That's what we don't want to hear. I don't want nobody to hear that. Amen. That's what God is trying to tell us. Okay. There's some responsibility here. Okay. As being a servant. Right. You have to have your mindset. I know everybody's like, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. But you're a servant too. Mm-hmm. You understand? You have a king. You, you, yes, he's your father. He's Abba Father. But he's also king. And you're part of the kingdom. And so we, we have to know that Paul, it, the Bible says the greatest among you is what? The least. The least. The least right? Meaning in, if you want to be the greatest in the kingdom, there is, there is a hierarchy. Okay? In the kingdom. But the hierarchy is flipped how we view things. Here, if you want to be the greatest in the kingdom, he says you have to be the greatest servant. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, I didn't come to what? Serve, right? Or I didn't come to be served, I came to serve. Mm -hmm. And so he's saying like the, the whole shift in our mindset. If I have to operate in my gifting as a teacher, it's a serving side of it. I'm not like, this ain't no brownie points. Like this is not like in my mind, like I get this out of this. Like I enjoy teaching, and, I, and, and to be honest with you, I feel like when I don't do these things, um, I feel like there's things that God doesn't even give me additional revelation because I'm doing it out of obedience to him. There's times where the Lord Jesus told me the last two years when I started teaching again, he said, if you're willing to speak to the people, I'm willing to speak to you. I was like, ooh, that's kind of tough. But he was letting me know. He was like, hey, like, I want you to be able to freely speak to the people because you know there's an there's a responsibility, you know, and I want you someone someone keep keep this in my mind just for a second. Second Corinthians five, 
because I'm going to go over that and I think it's Acts 13. But I'm just going to keep that just for a second. The Lord tell me, make sure we, we get to that part. But there is a responsibility, amen, that we all have mm -hmm. to our king. All right, 24 says this. Then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, okay, this is excuse bill, okay? All right. <laughs> this is, you already see it coming here. It says, Master, I knew you were a harsh man. Harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. Now, see, this is like, this would get like somebody ticked off, right? Because you're like, okay, I gave you something. Now you're bringing up excuses of why you couldn't do it, right? Do you really think our God in heaven who gives something to us and knows what we're capable of doing and then we switch it up and try to say, hey, like almost like indirectly blame him for the responsibility that he's given us. I knew you were these things and they didn't call him a harsh man at that, which is like, what is your perspective of your king, right? Like, think, think, think about that, just, just the language behind there, okay? This is out of the words of our Savior, Jesus. He's saying, harvesting crops that you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. Wow. I was afraid I would lose your money. So I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money back. Okay. I was afraid. Not one of us, we do not need to be afraid, okay? The Bible says he did not give you a spirit of fear. The reverence that I have for the Lord Jesus is the only, the Bible says to fear him that can destroy your body and soul. Our reverence for God is ultimately because we know he's the ultimate final decision maker. There's no other like side door, hey, behind curtain, you know, <laughs> number three, here's another option here. You know, it's not like, what was it? Wizard of Oz, remember? Uh, maybe I'm, I'm going back there. No, I'm thinking of Wizard of Oz, like when they was talking to oh, yeah. the thing, oh, the, yeah. the man behind the thing, like, oh, he ain't really, he really ain't that, you know? It's not going to be one of those things. It's like who you're getting is who you're getting. Mm -hmm. What you get is what you get. When we face the Lord, it is what it is. There is no other, hey, pull it, pull on the side. You know, I can't, I always joke on my wife. I'm like, hey. It is what it is. You're on your own. You know what I mean? Like, we ain't going to pull each other in and say, well, she actually said this at this time. So that's why I listen to her, Lord, or vice versa. It's not like that. You understand? And so this guy is tripping. He, this is the example that Christ is trying to tell us, hey, don't be this. He says, but the master replied, what? You wicked and lazy servant. Ouch. He's calling it how it is. Wicked and lazy servant. And, you know, I used to look at this passage and I used to think, is he talking to unbelievers or believers? Like, get this straight from me. But he kept saying the kingdom of heaven is like this. He's giving me the context right there. I used to think, oh, yeah, that makes sense. The world, they don't want to do anything for God. That makes sense. No. He called him a wicked and lazy servant. 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 I was like... I don't know how to like dice that up. Maybe we can, let's roll into the Greek and see that. No, I'm not going to do that. We know what servant means. <laughs> it means that you are obligated to your master, right? There should be some obedience there. And he says, you knew, meaning and you had the knowledge of harvesting crops I didn't plant and gathering crops I didn't cultivate. So you were meant for growth, but you decided not to do anything. He says, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I've gotten, I, I could have gotten some interest on it. He says, then he ordered, take the money from this servant. Who's, who is he talking to? <laughs> take the money from the servant. I don't know what that conversation looks like, but Jesus is making it very clear. It's saying, and, and give it, and give it to the one who has 10 bags of silver. It says, to those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. That's a trip, right? It says, now throw this useless servant into outer darkness. Mm -hmm. 
where there be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. Hold the phone. I don't like that passage. <laughs> because I'm like, wait a second, hold on. They don't teach us on Sundays. We don't talk about this part. I asked my pastor years ago. This is at an evangelical church. Kind of semi-mega. I was helping out in the youth ministry. Doing my little youth duties, you know? Being the 20-something-year-old I was at the time. And... Preacher went through the whole thing about the parable, the bride, and all this stuff, and and you see that again in the parable of what when they when they uh, the what is it the wedding right? And he said, "Why are you clothed in this? How'd you get in here? You know, throw them up." They said, "What? Bind them hand and feet, and throw them where? To the outer darkness." I'm like, "What is what is this outer darkness place?" And I've given people try to elaborate on this thing and go, oh, maybe he's saying just a voidless place, you know, separate from God. Last time I checked, outer darkness or the weeping and gnashing of teeth was always described even relation to the lake of fire, relation to hell, Guiana, whatever, right? And I started looking at this a little closer and going, is God really serious about like his servants or what? Or is he just like, are we just getting like, I don't know, cookie cutter, sweet tea, Christianity, you know, Burger King, my way, you know, like it's, it's all about do it, do it my way. And, and that's how it's going to go. Like, let's put everything together the way that you see it fit. Or do we have a master that is really looking for uh, a response? He's looking for us to be actively participating in what we were called to do. Now, I see this here, and it kind of trips me out because this person didn't do anything. It says, you didn't even deposit my money in the bank. At least you could have got some interest. So now a declaration was made. He said, whatever was given, he said, that person will have what? If they use well, they'll be given more. I've been saying this for some time. God gives me peace by peace little things to do. And I believe God is going to hand you guys piece by piece, little stuff, right? Most people are going to look at it insignificant. You can't look at it that way at all. You can't even worry about what other people think about what God has given you. You have to be concerned. God, this is what you gave me. I'm going to be obedient to it. Period, point blank. That's just what it is. I got to maximize it. I got to utilize it. I'm going to be productive. That's going to happen. You understand? You don't have to be fearful. You have to trust that if God gave it to you, it more than capable. That's the thing. He wants us to operate in faith. He wants to operate and say, hey, you got it? Now run with it. Okay? That's, that's what this is really all about. And understanding that there will be people, unfortunately, I'm praying in Jesus' name that is not this group. But I'm saying that from those who do not think, <laughs> it says, even with what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant. If they didn't have this part, I'd be like, okay, well, I don't have to look at that. I asked my pastor years ago this at the end of a preach. This is what this is what they used to do back in the day. She probably knows too. They would have the pastor go forward. He'd do the, you know, hoorah message. And everybody's like, yeah, great. Okay, meet the pastor everywhere afterwards like almost like a book signing kind of thing you know how it was they that was like a traditional thing pastor would it, sometimes pastors sneak out and other pastors like to stay right in front and everybody just comes right to them and they start asking questions take a picture of the pastor blah blah, blah. i came to him and i said hey wonderful message why'd you take this part out that's what i said to him i said why'd you take the part where it says throw the useless servant out into the outer darkness he'll be weeping and gnashing his teeth I said, what's the outer darkness, and why is there weeping and gnashing of the teeth? He just looked at me like, I think in his mind, he's probably like, who is this fool coming up to me, asking this question? Like, you know, I'm like, yeah, I paid my tithes, I paid my stuff. Can you ask this question? He couldn't answer it for me. He said, well, there's this really good website. It's called Bible.com. You should be able to go to it. You know, at that moment, for my, I don't know how old it was, but this is before I was like fully repented, but I was seeking God. At that moment, I could have like felt crushed. Like, this dude don't know what he's saying. Right. Or he doesn't even care to know. 
He doesn't even want to give me even like a little bit of a crumb. Like, I, like I'm like Hansel and Gretel over here. Like, give me a little bit of something to work with. And I was like, wow, that's really how it is. He just wanted to get that message out. He ain't worried about really my growth or my what I really want to see. And I realized it was like something in that day that I was going to have to. I was going to have to seek the kingdom of God first for myself. And all of its righteousness. I realized that that's what really has to be done. You're going to have to seek the things of God and passionately want it for yourself. You're not going to like, this ain't going to be a thing where it's like, no one's going to just push you over the situation. Some people may help you along the way. That's often what happens. But when it came to this thing called truth, I had to seek God's kingdom. The Bible says, don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow has its own worries. But above everything else, seek God's kingdom first and not or his righteousness. So everything that God sees right, we have to evaluate through the lens of his kingdom, through his spirit. That's why it says for us to be led into all truth of all matters. Weeping and gnashing of the teeth is something so serious because it's only correlated to some type of judgment. Mm -hmm. Weeping and gnashing is saying like, some have, some have described it like utter, like most despair, you know, like I was so close. I was so close. How did I lose this all? Mm -hmm. Right. And those are the, those are, these are the, to me, some of the most scariest passages in the word of God. When you see being so close to the truth and then not taking heed of it literally rejecting it. Mm -hmm. In fact, like partially being one way and then not going forward in the rest of it. And, and, and this is where I believe God wants to wake a group of folks up like yourselves, like myself, to let other people know this, to say, hey, like we're not really gonna be like playing church like that. You know what I mean? You want to understand that you're part of this family of God, this kingdom of God. But there's a reality of when Jesus says, not everyone that calls me Lord, Lord. <laughs> like that is a, I, I don't want to keep looking at that passage. But I feel the Lord telling me, saying like, hey, my people need to, need to know that it is a reality here. That he wants endurance. He wants faithfulness. And the Bible says that if he is, which he is, the author and finisher of our faith, let him finish us. Mm -hmm. Let him finish this good work he started within us. Mm -hmm. and, and this is a part of it. All right. Now let's fast forward real quick to the epistles. Everybody catching some of this? I want to be all doom and gloom. I'm not, <laughs> we're not hanging out in revelations like that. Not yet. <laughs> at least. <laughs> it's a revelation. But here's the thing. The Bible says it's a revelation of what? Jesus Christ. This is the totality of things. Mm -hmm. Amen. Second Corinthians 5. So we can run there real quick. Now, all the passages we went over, there are so many sermons on that stuff. It's not even fun. Right? Like, this is something, it's not that you never heard before. But there's something that God wants to reveal in these little tidbits of information here. But it's it's crucial. It's crucial to know that, one, you're a servant. Amen? Okay? That you have to look at Jesus. You have to look at God. What did the Bible talk about? We can't serve what? Scholars. There you go. I was like, I was all looking at her. Scholar. <laughs> Calling her out right there. But why, though? Because the Bible says we'll do what? We'll hate one and love the other. We can't serve God. The Bible says you can't serve God. They say serve God in money, but it's really mammon. It means materialism. Okay? It means like, it's almost like the pride of life. Like you serve what you yield to. The Bible says that if, if there that, that I think it's in Peter it says that whatever a man is led by that is his master 
So there are sins and things that we appeal to. It may be the career. There's some people that are, you know, they yield to the idea of like their, their spouse or their future and all this other stuff. And at the end of the day, you can start having these things. They're beautiful things to experience. Relationships, all that other stuff. But the reality is like Christ has to be first. And it's hard for people to look at it like that. You know, it's like when we're at a certain level and age, I know my growth has changed. Years and years back, I used to look at, I'm not going to lie, I used to come to God like he was like spiritual ATM machine, you know, yeah. like in a borderline, like a, a genie in the lamp kind of situation because I was fed a lot of bad prosperity doctrine, big time. Yeah. I was eating it up, gobbling it. Good it, I mean, it sounds good, you know what I'm saying? And then there's all this disappointment and then you're like, help, somebody throw me a, a lifeline. This ain't working. And the Bible's like, yeah, I told you, in this world, you will have what? Tribulation. Mm -hmm. But be of what? Good cheer. If Jesus bled and died and was marred more than any other man, and then we have the nerve to try to act like, you know, our struggle is like passing a gospel track in Walmart. It's like, calm down. You ain't really doing nothing. <laughs> you know? You're not really suffering. Mm -hmm. The apostles suffered unto, unto death, blood. That's why I get even kind of weird, even like being in an apostolic function. I don't like that. That's why I tell people it's like there's the apostles and then there's apostles, right? The, the apostles, these dudes really, really went through it. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. They turned up, they, they said Jesus turned up the heat. We turned up the heat with Jesus. Paul said, if you suffer with him, you'll what? Reign with him. Mm -hmm. All right. Paul even mentioned and said, don't think the little bit of suffering that you're going through this earth is really worthy to be compared to the what? Eternal weight of glory that is going to be bestowed upon you. You that are who? Children of the most high God. And he said, if you're a child, you're what? Heir. Heir to what? Heir to a kingdom. So he's saying, you got to act like you're really a part of a kingdom. You need to re respond and operate like you're a part of this thing. Because if you don't, you can be blindsided. Amen? Amen? Y'all getting this? I hope y'all getting it. I hope it's like, ah! Are we landing somewhere? Okay? I don't want y'all to... <laughs> we're not, we're not turn over, boom, like a Jumanji turn. You know? We're not doing that. All right? Okay. Five. This is where I want you guys to see this here. For we know that... When this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is, when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself and not by human hands. It says, we grow weary in our present bodies and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing. Okay, so it, it, the more I started to spend time with God, and I started to go into the Lord. He got the groans going today. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, even the Bible says that we groan deep things, right? Like the Bible can interpret our groans. You understand? Words that can't even be uttered. You know, there's times where I remember I used to be in my prayer language, but there would be this moment where like everything would stop. And I would just be like, like, like this sigh, this I can't even explain it, but the Lord Jesus Christ knows what it is. You know, he, he can, it's almost like he can reach our deepest emotional, almost like he knows our soul. You know what I mean? He knows like the core of your soul and he's able to like present this to the father in heaven. You know, I think it's Romans eight that, that describes that. Um, when he says that our bodies are, are uh, we're in a place where we're growing weary. When I grow closer to the Lord, sometimes I'll be like, man, I want to get up out of this body. You know, I want to get up out of this situation. Paul was the first one saying to live as Christ and to die as what? Gain. Amen. He kept telling the Philippian believers, he was like, look, I am here for your sake. 
Like, he really wants to be up out of here. You think Paul really wanted to be ship shipwrecked three times? Like, going through all his trials and wearing it as this badge of honor? That's when he brings up, I, I can do all things that Christ strengthens me, is because of the stuff he went through. Not just because it's like a cool slogan to say on an Instagram post, right? Or to put on your S3 curries or whatever. Like, no, he's, he's being honest. He's trying to say, look, I learned to be content in all things. I learned to be what? Content. I learned. It was a process. It took time. Maybe there was moments where he wasn't content. Maybe there was moments where he was shouting to God and saying, man, this ain't fair. I'm not going to act like I'm not the only one. Do you have those moments where you're like, oh my gosh, why? <laughs> why like this? You know, literally losing sleep, hair, getting old. You're just like, whatever. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, all right, I'm going to get through this. But, but Paul said, I learned to be content. Whether I was abased, meaning in whether I had basically little or I, an abasement is like a form of, it's, it's a major form of lacking humility. He said, or what? Abundance, right? Whether I had a lot or I had little, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Amen? And so what Christ is saying as a servant here, and we're looking from Paul who called himself a servant, and then he switched it up to a grandiose title. What was his next title? He, he'll say, I'm an apostle, and in the same sentence will say, I'm a servant. In the same sentence, he'll say, I'm a slave. In the same sentence, he'll say, I'm a what? Prisoner in chains. Whoa. You can tell me that there's liberty in Christ Jesus, but you're still, <laughs> but you're a prisoner as well. Good type of prisoner. Yeah. He's saying, I'm locked up to Jesus. Throw away the key. I'm sold out. We don't want no hesitation in our spirit. We want to make sure that we know that we're doing this in a bigger, there's a, there's a bigger goal to it. Amen? Let's read the rest. So, are you getting new bodies, yes or no? Yes. yes. You're getting that. Okay? Don't think that this, this responsibility that we're managing here, it comes in pieces. Like I said, it took for me to just listen to his voice. He said, and I'm not not concerned people, but he said, stop watching the dude from Rock Church. Lord, forgive me. If y'all love Rock Church, hey, praise God. I was, I, was, I was with them for a little bit, okay, in attendance. But God said, stop listening to that dude. I said, what? He said, stop listening to that guy. Then he told me, stop listening to T.D. Jakes. <laughs> and, and I felt bad because I was like, man, those are preachers. Or at least one of them is a preacher. And the other one, like, you know, it's just simple baby messages. And I said, okay. And what do you want? He said, I've called you as my servant. You are a teacher. Go back to teaching. I'm like, well, people are not going to, you know, listen to me. I will talk to you as long as you're willing to talk to them. I said, okay, I'll do that. So I started doing that. Everything started to add up. A year later, they seen like 150,000 messages, okay? Like, they, they, they probably know more, more than like the average, the people in their age group, trust me. You quote yeah, something, so large, they're going to be like, boom. Yeah, yeah, probably, most likely. So... But that's because Lord Jesus told me to disciple my family first, okay? We all have people in our community, in our households, we can pour into. Don't be afraid to do that. You understand? That is going to be a beautiful process when you start seeing the fruits of your labor. Amen? And so this is a part of it. He says, we're weary in our bodies. Okay, that's two. We grow weary in our present bodies, and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing. For we will put on heavenly bodies. We will not be spirits without a body. Okay, so we are spirits. Amen? Mm -hmm. Is that not a true statement? So I know we, and I know we have these bodies. My hands are cold. Stomach hurts. We get tired. We're like, oh, right? You know? And, but, maybe look at Jeremiah already doesn't know. Um, what? <laughs> no, he's, he's joking. He was joking. <laughs> But that's the thing. We have a new situation that God is putting into place. He's putting it in a place where this, this eternal weight of glory is not just our bodies, guys. This is a whole situation that's about to be set apart. You know, 
I mentioned to you guys, what was it, two weeks ago? Did you come to that Bible study? That was the first ones when we were inside of the... Was it two weeks or a week ago? I don't know, guys. Long enough. Whatever the day it was, it was awesome. We prayed for the lady in the back, but I talked about building the house. And I said that we have to be careful of how we build, like what materials we use, right? I was talking about the beam of judgment. That was, that was, that was kind of highlighting the beam of judgment, which is basically... One of the things that we get rewards and all that other stuff. But if we look at this here, you're inheriting a whole lot, whether you know it or not, right? It says, while we live in these earthly bodies, we groan inside. But it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on our what? New bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. It says, God himself has prepared us for this. That as a guarantee, thank you, Lord, he has given us his what? Holy Spirit, okay? It says, so we are always confident, even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not at home with the Lord. This is the Bible when it says to be absent of the body is to be what? Present with the Lord, okay? That's what this scripture comes from. It says, for we live by believing and not by seeing. Okay, what is another translation for that? For we what? Walk by faith, not by sight. In order to be responsible to the Lord Jesus Christ, in order to build up those lamps, amen, to get that oil, you got to walk by faith, not by sight. You have to understand that even if the circumstance does not look like what it looks like, you know this reality. That as long as you're pleasing God by living a life of faith, meaning in trust and dependency in Him. You understand? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Right? The world, the Bible says, by we by faith, we know that the world was created. Amen. So we understand it. We can go through the hall of faith. Y'all do that another day, though. <laughs> That's what it is. Hebrews, what? I think if you read Hebrews 10, 11, that whole section, section of 12, it's a beautiful. By the way, if you guys ever read another book besides Romans, Hebrews is awesome too, okay? It's some deep stuff. It's like, oh, that's why, that's what Christ is? Yes, he is. That's what the word of God is? Yes. You know, talks about the mountain, talks about, you know, the better covenant, everything. It's a beautiful thing. God raised the standard, amen? But this is what he wants us to inherit, this truth. He goes on saying, we walk by faith, not by sight, right? Seven, for we, believe, we live by believing and not by seeing. Yes, we are fully confident and we would rather be away from these earthly bodies. For then we will be at home with the Lord. So whether we are here in this body or away from this body, he says our goal is to what? Please him. Say, I want to please God. I want to please God. Amen. It says, for we must all stand before Christ to be judged. Wait a second. Yep. It says, we will each receive whatever we deserve. Oh, Lord, what? For the good or, oh, is that or? Evil we have done in this earthly body. These are like those passages I go, huh? What? We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this earthly body. Okay, because, I, like, I love this continuation from Paul. Because we understand our what? What do you guys see there? What's your, 